Hi and welcome to Real Magic Review and this week it's a little bit different. I'm not really reviewing a new trick or anything like that, I'm kind of reviewing a trick that's been out for a while but for a different reason. So less of a review, more of a discussion if you see what I mean. Uh, so this week I will be kind of-ish reviewing Leo Smetzer's Turbo Stick. So before we get going, can you please like and subscribe and share and all that stuff like I always say and I always mean it really does make all the difference. And head on over to carmagiccourse.com, that's carmagiccourse.com and check out the uh, online course that I've got which is way, I started this way back in 2013 and it's building all the time and it's pretty much everything I know with a deck of cards and now what we're going into is everything I know about performing magic or becoming a professional magician or getting over nerves or whatever level you're at, there'll be something for you. So that's cardmagiccourse.com. So, you know, this came out in 2013 and ever since then I've kind of seen it and I've, I've never bought it because it's the paddle trick, right? And why do I need another paddle trick? But I didn't get it out of my head, so I got hold of it and, and decided to take it out to a contemporary audience and just monitor the reaction. So I didn't do this loads, I didn't do it a hundred times, I took it out into a festival, showed it to people and just monitored whether, you know, for them it was relevant or not. And this is what we're looking at really is, are, are we the magicians that it's just all about effect or are we the school of thought which, which says it has to have meanings? And there's two kind of schools of thought in magic and I don't really agree with any of them and, and I'll tell you what I mean in a minute. So you've got the one school that says magic has to have some sort of external meaning. It has to have almost a narrative in a way. Uh, and, and it can't just exist for the point of being. So if you if you take, for example, the Omni deck. Okay, now I saw a discussion on the Omni deck on one of the forums the other day, which kind of, it, I wouldn't say it wound me up, but I wasn't far off it. And, and I, I didn't delve in there because I just knew it was a, a place where you can never return that thought rabbit hole. But I... So people saying the Omni deck is pointless. It's a stupid trick because it has no meaning. So to give it meaning, you've got to give it some sort of script. You've got to say that the the glasses are becoming, uh, the the cards are becoming clear, or something becomes clear, or you've got to put that into your script to make it relevant. Now, I'm sorry, but I've been doing the Omni deck for a few years now, and I don't really say anything. I just go lift your hand up. The cards are going to vanish. They haven't vanished, and the reaction is always really, really, really strong. So regardless of any meaning, regardless of any kind of clever scripting or trying to give you a reason for those cards turning into that plastic block, the reality is that people talk about it for a long time and sometimes they'll see me at another gig and they'll say, oh, do that one with a plastic block. You know, so they know it's a plastic block. They know it hasn't turned out. They know it isn't some sort of like story thing, but they still love the trick and talk about it for a long time. And isn't that kind of what we're about? Now, it doesn't mean that we should do anything that just gets a reaction because that's going back to it, it's got to kind of suit our context and suit ourselves. And that's again why I'm really confused about this thing because to be honest, the first time I saw this and the first time I saw a knife trick, I, I loved it. I thought it was beautiful. I wanted to do it. I, I saw the reactions people get in. But there's something about walking around with this little paddle, almost like a lolly stick, that, that sort of, I don't know, it's, it's almost like it grates a little bit. Uh, so so I, I, don't know what, I don't know whether it's because of the prop, I don't know if it's because of this movement that we all do and it feels a bit weird, which of course you shouldn't do like that. Um, so let's just have a look at the footage and see the reactions. Hello, watch quick. Make sure I don't do anything dodgy, hang on. All right, Mr. Fingers. Right, so. <laughs> right stand up. You're gonna, be, you're gonna be on YouTube for the world to see. Right. You've got the struggles with his eyes, haven't you? Right, watch. Oh, okay. So, so but, yeah. there's no trick questions here. If I ask you a question, it's meant to be as simple as it is. So you've got, you got three X's. X's. Three X's. And three there. Three outs. Right, Side, so. Yeah. Let's start. If I, if I take one of them off, how many should that leave, right? It's not a trick five. question. Five. five. All right, so it should, should be five, all right? But just give it, it's actually four, but I'll give, give it a little flick and it's actually six again. All right, so we've gone yeah. back in time a little bit. Oh. I'm going to, if I, the weird thing, if I rub one of these off, it comes off the other side. Oh, yeah. All right. Josh, leave no, right, watch, no, watch. right, so if and if I rub uh, rub one of them off, it always comes off the other side. Oh, nice. But you go back in time like we did before, and you can go back to oh. two, and we've got four. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So watch. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> so again, look, if I if I got the middle one, what well, we've got one there, and we that oh. pops up to there, nah. and you can actually move it down to there, and if you flick it, it flicks oh. back up to there, and down to there, and back up to there. there. And you, <laughs> 
back up to there. And if I, if I, if I, what? If I, if I rub it off like that, right? Yeah. Right, it's not there. There's like a residue there. You can see on my hand. Watch your thing. You throw it back on there, and that's the thing. You just pop it off there, and you've got the pen again and the marker, and you've got. What? <laughs> there you go. Uh, but you, but you got six again. All right. So the way, <laughs> so. So, <laughs> so if I, if I, and it happens each time. So if I wipe that one away, you know, it comes off the other side. All right, if I wipe uh, uh, that one away, we're left with one, and then we jump back and it's, it's two <laughs> again, oh, right? Yeah. You've got one there because you haven't got one there. <laughs> and then you've got one there, and you can actually move that back to there and flick it back <laughs> up to there. And you've got the pen that comes out there, and you've got the... Yeah. That's mad, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's mad. I was trying to watch everything like everybody always does, but yeah. no, you got me. Cool. So you've got six crosses. Uh, if I remove one of them, how many should that leave? Absolutely, all right? But it, it leaves uh, six again. <laughs> Which is kind of weird, isn't it? As long as you have only been drinking, this is going to be all right. <laughs> Anything else gets involved, it might start. I'll get you to move it down to there and flick it back up. There. <laughs> the weird thing is, if you rub it off, right, it's completely rubbed off. And if you see the residue in my hand, so you can actually throw it back on. Off, you've got the marker there and nothing left. Hey, like that. It comes off the other end as well. But the weird thing is, you're left with one there and one there, but not one there, two there. Okay, and we're left with two. So if I rub them in, it's confusing, isn't it? You know those ales you said, is that helping or is it hindering? All right, and if you give it a little rub, you've actually rubbed it off. And you can see the residues on my finger there. If you just throw it on, it actually comes over there and we've got the, we've got the thing there. And if I rub that off, we've just got the pen and nothing there. And you can oh, nice. see that that's... There you go. Go. Thank you very, thank you very much. Did you enjoy that? So first of all, what I found with this is, yes, when I got the paddle out, it it just felt a bit wrong. Um, I did try a couple of times. I didn't get it on film. Is there, there was I was at the, and I put it behind the bar, right? And I was at the bar, and I'm gutted I didn't get the footage. I, I asked them, I, I was asking people to film this, and they, a couple of people didn't do it right. But I just said to the barman, "Can you pass me that thing?" I didn't didn't talk about what it was, and he gave it to me, and I and then I got and I got him to pass me a pen, and I did it with a pen and the thing without it saying anything about it, and that felt a little bit better. So I didn't overplay it. I didn't sort of make it as if I'd gone up and it was an impromptu thing. I just kind of said, "I'll oh, pass me that. I'll do a trick with it." And and there were no real questions from the audience. Nobody really said, "Oh, what what that's that's pointless." So I never felt it was pointless. And the reactions from that little cross moving around were genuinely puzzling. And I don't mean puzzling as in, I, I mean with a kind of magical twist on it, because we, we don't want to show people puzzles. It's not, it's a bit more than that. But I, I felt that it was a magical experience for them, and especially when they get to hold it at the end. What I also found is that a lot of people have kind of, you know, picking the thing apart and trying to trying to get into it, which is, again, is quite a, quite a good sign. So I think that the, the effect itself is fine. It's not a closer for me. It's not some, you know, I always talk about the, the ultimate closer for me is the bottle through table or card on ceiling or card or ring to wallet or ring floor. I haven't really found that much that kind of tops all that stuff. And it isn't that. And when I talked to people afterwards, I did say, you know, what did you think of the trick? And, and a couple of people said that it felt like, it, I really enjoyed it, but it felt like it didn't really go anywhere. And even with the pen production at the end, they felt it was a bit of a kind of damp finish. So that doesn't mean to me that I think we have to find some major finale with it, you know, making it vanish or any of that, because there's not that's not really context we're in. It's not really a vanishy trick. Um, and that feels, again, a bit weird with a pen, because you're doing this thing and then the pen kind of comes out. And is that a different sort of trick or am I overthinking it, as as, as magicians uh, tend to do? But I do think it's a genuinely good trick to do as a kind of little interim thing, as one of those you know, a little down moment. You do something amazing, you say, look, I'm going to show you something really cool. You, you do the trick and then you move on to your big finish. And I think, I think there's a lot of variety in that. And especially if you're going to have kids at the venue. See, I have not got many tricks that kids really like. I've got sponge balls. 
I've got, I do a coin thing, I do a card thing if they write their name on it and they're kind of like that. But, th but this, I reckon, is something that if you add it on you and, you know, you're at a wedding and there's a few kids around, you, you kind of do that thing and they're gonna, they're, they're, it's easy for them to follow and watch. And I think it's a fun thing. Uh, Richard Sanders has got a really good eye for what works. And that's kind of what he does to me. He takes, you know, you look at fiber optics, uh, you look at Extreme Burn, he takes those sort of oldish tricks, because obviously Extreme Burn was Pat Page's Easy Money. I think, I think I've got that right. Um, he takes those things and he, he kind of lets us know about them and, and modernizes them. So fiber optics is a routine I do on stage all the time. I found that through Richard Sanders, because I'd kind of dismiss rope tricks bit the same as this as being a bit silly and then I rediscovered it and, and I kind of feel like I've done that with this a little bit. So for me it's it's not about whether it's a good or bad trick. I think it's a good trick. There's a reason why this trick is still around. It goes back so far. I mean it's in Tarbell, uh, you know, done with a knife. We've got all the other sort of chameleon knives and the colour changing knives which it's also based on. The paddle trick is in every kid's magic a trick and actually incidentally a nice uh, presentation idea for this I think is to say you know you remember those things you get the kids magic sets which you couldn't really work out well I kind of worked it out and it's quite cool even something like that to justify this sort of you know flap of plastic that you gotta kind of carry around and I'll just go into what you get with this because you know we are talking about this this release here to me it isn't anything new with the routine okay you open John Carney's book of secrets there is a beautiful routine there with with a knife and pieces of paper and that gives it an impromptu feel which again gives it a slightly better context you pick a knife up off the table and do the trick and create that same effect so you're not going to get anything really new here other than the fact that it's a dry white thing which of course makes it reusable and something you can walk around because you know sometimes you're not going to have a knife and a bit of water and some bits of paper it all gets a bit fiddly and actually I find this a lot less fiddly and and easier to do uh, so if you if if you're like me and you haven't really played too much with the paddle move I was kind of glad to get this because the DVD's good it shows you uh, some really good alternatives some of them a little bit weak I, I'm really not a fan of you know with the the original one with the gems on it where you kind of force the number three and you count through it it's the different forces to me that I don't really buy them that that doesn't fit it's got to be more magical so just you know do the crosses on it do the trick and and just let it speak for itself uh, so there it is Leo Smetzer's turbo stick put out uh, with Sanders FX you know like in 2013 and if you've got anything like this in your drawers, the point is just go and look for them again before spending all your money on new stuff. You know, you might find that you get this, you take it out and you have a really good time with it. And I've seen videos of people on the forums do it to, with great responses, way better than I got in the festival. So remember that wasn't really worked in. So thanks very much. There will be more sort of proper reviews of new material coming soon. Uh, let me know if you want more of these or less of them. If you want more discussions on older tricks we might have, just email me on steve at stevefalkner.com or comment below. I do read all of the comments and, um, and I, I will respond to them. You know, I, I'm not doing this just for what I want to do. This is about what you want and what you will watch. So steve at stevefalkner.com and please go over and check out cardmagiccourse.com which is my online card magic course, 180 videos plus and we're recording a new uh, course at the moment on how to practice all the psychology of practice. So we're going into a lot more theory and there's a new uh, Slack channel that, that we're creating a community around and it's just 9.99 at the moment of recording this. I'm not saying it's gonna be like that when you're watching it if this is in a few years time. So thanks very much, have a great one, enjoy the rest of your day.